Hello everybody and welcome to another update on the virus pandemic that we are experiencing across the globe. Today is Sunday the 8th of March and what I'm going to talk about in this specifically in this video three things current update of the situation across the globe secondly uh, just a brief discussion on the two types of the virus that we know is now going around across the world genetically there's slight differences in the two and then thirdly how can we defeat the virus because you must remember that the virus cannot do anything on its own it cannot even multiply on its own one virus cannot become two if it doesn't have your help it needs your help and uh, if it has your help it can multiply so we're going to go through a couple of practical details okay let's start off firstly at the moment um, documented cases remember these are documented cases that was actually tested so there are many many people that weren't tested and that were also positive especially the mild infections weren't tested and that's why in places like South Korea they test a big big number of people so their mortality rate is less than 1% about 0.6.7 percent mortality rate in South Korea and remember they are um, second on the list at the moment with number of cases but they test people a lot earlier so they test younger people which all recover so the rate of uh, serious infections is uh, much less there in Italy however they've got a very old population in Italy so the mortality rate is higher and average age of deaths that occur in Italy is around about 80 you know 75 to 80 average age of those patients so that's pretty old and you know for, compared to the general population and that's one of the problems that Italy have uh, today they've got emergency measures they're locking down the north of Italy to try and prevent the spread for the elderly if we look at the numbers um, we've had about yes there we go 107,510 cases that's um, on Sunday afternoon and this 3,657 recovered 60,917 countries involved at the moment 103 and we have now got three cases in South Africa all looks like they came from the same um, uh, area in Italy and those are the ones that brought the virus in just a quick recap on the clinical features remember it's a lower respiratory tract virus it's not a sinus or ear virus yes it can start in your throat a little bit but the big issue is you're going to have a temperature, a high temperature of about 38 degrees Celsius and 98% of patients have a high fever. The virus has got an outer structure. Remember those little pr proteins we talked about that forms the, what they call the crown that prefers to go to the lung tissue. So that's why the next symptom is coughing, 76% coughs. And that is a big reason why the virus spreads so much compared to swine flu, for instance, which is a lot more sore throat, headache, body ache and pain, so they don't cough that much. These patients almost all cough and it spreads the virus. So that's why we say do not cough in your hand and touch things in people. Cough in your arm or your elbow or maybe in the tissue, but just don't cough in your hand or on surfaces. It will really help. Then if the patients get a little bit sicker, 55% get difficulty in breathing. And the reason for that is if they've got underlying lung issues, lung problems, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, um, or if they're older age, definitely also your smokers and your patients that have a vaping history or, or anything that causes inflammation in the lung will struggle a bit more when they get this virus. If we get down to this new feature here, they've now determined uh, through studies that was done in China that the virus is mutated one of the amino acids on the genetic chain on the RNA that black little thing there has changed um, and the first initial ones was called the L type um, and then there's an S type as well the L type um, definitely was more severe and um, it killed more people older people um, there but still the majority 97% recovered the change one that we have the S type spreads a lot quicker but it's not as severe 
So we are seeing both of these types in most of the countries um, across the world. Okay, now let's get to the important point. How are we going to defeat this virus? What do, can we do practically and are we going to survive? Yes, the answer is we're definitely going to survive. Um, it's important to know that your immune system, your antibodies were designed by the designer to kill the virus. That's the only way it's going to kill. Remember, a vaccination is not a cure. A vaccination just tells your body to make a few antibodies so that when you have contact with a virus, you can attack the virus and kill it quicker. It's much quicker than to have a response, but you have to have the vaccination again. So the only way you get complete immunity against the virus is if you get the virus yourself, your antibodies will be produced and you will kill the virus and you will have immunity against that strain of the virus. So important to know, what do we do to defeat this virus? Because the virus really is powerless. It, like I said, it cannot multiply on its own. It needs to send its own genetic material into your body. That RNA genetic material has to go into your cell and tell your cell, please make another virus for me. And then that's what your cell does. Your cell makes another virus for the virus so that it can be too. It's amazing actually, the virus cannot um, live on its own. That's why it dies on open surfaces after a while and especially if it's warmer weather it will die a little bit quicker. So how do we prevent this? The virus, um, like I said, cannot multiply by itself. Secondly, prevent entry. So how do we prevent entry? You don't come into close contact with someone that's ill and um, you know someone that's sneezing and coughing, droplets spit close to you, you don't want that entry. So yes, if you're in a plane um, it might help to wear a mask, especially if you cough or sneeze so that you don't spread it in the airplane or in a close environment. Preventing the virus from growing in your throat when it does come in. It's important to realize that the virus does not like warmer temperatures. So drinking warm water, and as some people even say, warm water with some lemon in it, is a good idea because the virus does not like the warmer temperature environment in the back of your throat. Please refrain from drinking ice water or ice cold water. Um, it's a good environment for the virus to be in a cold temperature or less than 15 degrees. We don't want that. Then um, keep your, your lungs healthy. What does that mean? It means you don't want to be unnecessarily exposed to smoke, to vaping, to anything that can cause inflammation in your lungs. If you are a smoker or a vapor, please reduce the levels of intake of smoking and vaping because it's definitely puts your lungs um, at a detriment in having to deal with this with this virus. It already makes a, a layer of inflammation between the alveoli, which is the little bubble that the air comes into, and the blood vessel that is there to take up the new oxygen that you were breathing in. So the more things you have there, the, the more of a problem is. If you're an asthmatic, make sure you use your preventative inhaler not just your reliever, your preventative inhaler, so that you can reduce the inflammation and the swelling around the alveoli in the lung area. Okay, prevent spreading. Like I said, we don't want the virus to be in open air places when you sneeze and when you cough. It can only spread through drop droplet spread. Um, you know, and when you're sick and you're not sure what it is, stay home. Stay home. Make sure that it, you get better first. Your immune system kills the virus. That's really important. We have got an immune system that can produce antibodies. It needs to see the virus as the virus gets a little bit more in your body because you make more of it. As the, it multiplies, your body sees it. Your body makes its own antibodies against the virus and it starts killing off the virus. That does take a while. It takes a couple, quite a couple of days, up to a week even, uh, or even a little bit more. And you need enough antibodies to get rid of the virus. Because the virus has not been around before, this specific one, we don't have antibodies. And it takes long for us to produce them or you know, to first recognize the virus, then produce them, then kill the virus. So the first week, five days to seven days, you're ill and you don't feel well. And, and that's when the, your immune system is at work. So that's why you've got to rest. That's why you've got to stay home. That's why your fluids have got to be good. Your vitamins have got to be good. You've got to look after yourself and be healthy in that time and not spread the virus in that time. That's really, really important. 
Um, and the next time that you get exposed to the virus, you already have the antibodies, so you will not get sick. It's important to realize that. Why don't we all get chickenpox as adults? Because we've had chickenpox as, as children, and now we have got the, the antibodies. So you have contact with chickenpox virus, viruses through the year, but you don't get sick because of that. So that's really important to understand how it works. It's not a bacteria that can multiply on its own and that you can kill with antibiotics. Okay, then getting to the last few points, um, like I said, it has no power of its own. It cannot multiply like a bacteria. Um, and it's important not to live in fear. If we live in fear of this thing, that is not even that powerful. You know, fear creates cortisol from your adrenal glands. Your stress hormones increases. When your cortisol increases, your immune system will be weaker. So you cannot take away the only weapon you have against the virus, your immune system, by stressing, by fear of things that are not going to happen. So, you know, fear is believing things that aren't there yet, believing things that have not happened yet, unseen things. You believe they are true, but they are not. So let's have knowledge, let's uh, walk in faith and let's believe and let's know how to deal with this and be sensible. It's important to know that we need to look after our older people. We need to make sure that um, we prevent the spread to them because they've got weak immune system. Also the patients in, in, in all the countries in the world with, that have got um, lower immune systems, people that have TB, uh, people that are not well fed, well nourished, they really are at risk and we need to look after them. I had a question about um, creches and children. Remember the children are much better off um, and um, you know they're not the ones that really get sick with the virus. Um, as we know more about this, we'll, we'll see more, but under age nine, there's currently not a major risk for the children. It's generally our older population that's going to struggle. Okay, that's enough for today. I think it's been a, it's been a long video with a lot of information. And um, so, yes, be prepared, but don't act in fear. Be sensible and make sure that we work as a team to keep this virus under control and actually defeat it. Thank you for listening and remember, stay healthy.